So uh, thank you for coming back uh, for the second session of the day. Uh, and we're going to talk about tools for directory file session, or file sharing. Um, so based off uh, this morning's uh, basically events, um, plus uh, other discussion, I actually rewrote all of my slides in the past four minutes. Uh, so if they are slightly rough, uh, please bear with me. Um, but I hope the uh, change in slides and ideas um, will ultimately be worthwhile. Uh, so, uh, of course, um, if you have not heard of Molsi, I'm going to just take uh, 30 seconds to talk about us real quick. Uh, so, we are uh, a field that's designed to serve and enhance uh, the computational electrical sciences community, so very closely related to IXL uh, and their strategies in many ways. Um, probably one of the big differences is that we're not just one dynamics, we are quantum mechanics, we are quantum informatics. Uh, course training, etc. So the, the range that we actually cover uh, is really quite enormous um, compared to uh, other niches. Uh, and I think you're going to see a lot more of these coming out of the U.S. Um, so there is this uh, software infrastructure for sustained innovation uh, grants, which have individual PI, multi-PI, and institute level uh, grants within them. Um, in fact, we are one of the first out of two uh, institute level grants. Um, the other one's called the Science Gateways, which is more like uh, how do you connect, um, you know, a bench chemist or education um, to something like in the uh, trajectories or building this? So they, they're much more uh, on the community point. Um, but then there's ones um, starting up, like there's a SSI from the UK uh, analog starting up. There's a physics one. Um, so I think you'll see a lot more of these uh, in the future. Um, we're about uh, two and a half years old at this point. So in some ways, we're uh, kind of getting up there in age. Uh, we're also a huge collaborative effort by eight different universities. Um, we are centrally located in Blacksburg, Virginia, um, but uh, our board is made up from members from each of the universities. Uh, there's about 12 of us in total actually at central location. Um, if you're in the United States, we also have um, about 24 software fellowships for undergrads and graduates that you can look into as well. Um, so happy to talk about any of this much more. Um, I won't take any more at this particular time. <clears throat> Um, and so one thing I wanted to connect back to was um, back to this whole uh, file ideas and um, trying to eliminate a little bit more of what we're talking about with data models if you do not want. Um, so uh, of course, uh, one of the things that we did was uh, quantum chemistry schema. So how can we do file sharing for quantum chemistry? Um, however, in comparison to MD, quantum chemistry is incredibly brutally easy. Um, here is an entire input file, which is exactly reproducible with any given program and will produce you effectively the same thing. Um, so it is uh, about as simple as it gets. Um, however, the, the ideas within here, I hope uh, we can uh, eliminate. Um, so one thing I really want to harp on one more time is that like, it's not only JSON. Like, this is presented as JSON, but for example, like within here, um, I need maybe a 50 megabyte array. Um, 50 megabytes array in JSON is basically the worst thing you can ever do in your life. Um, so instead, what you can do is you can dump this HDF5, um, and if I have a Python dictionary of like, uh, this kind of data in NumPy array, I can just say 2 HDF5 um, with one line of code, and it's just there. And I can reroute it back into C++ or anything else. Um, so these kind of ideas are extremely powerful, um, and of course, like a lot of people want to do YAML for input files. Um, just be careful with YAML, as there are uh, things in YAML that are not reproducible in these other languages, like anchors. Um, as pointed out, um, provenance is incredibly important. So provenance has an incredible number of tiers. Um, what we found is simply if you have the name of the program and the version involved, um, gets you extremely far. Like it doesn't tell you a ton of data, but it actually gets you 90% um, there. Uh, and of course, you can go on it down. It depends on the creator for this. Um, but you can have also what kind of hardware was it on, how many cores, how much memory. Uh, Etc. Uh, inside this. Uh, because again, we're these key value dictionaries, um, this can be the minimal set and you can expand it as far as you wish inside these things. Um, and can, I, can I just ask sure. you, yeah. who came up with this? Who agreed? Who was using it? Uh, so to launch this particular effort, um, we actually took uh, about a group of 30. Um, and we had members from uh, 10 different QM programs, five different visualizers, a couple MD people, um, shoved them into a room and said, do this. Um, so over about a two day span. Mm -hmm. um, it, like I said, public chemistry is much, much simpler uh, than uh, MD, so it was certainly doable in a two day span. Um, that's, that's what I'm <clears throat> And the other thing is, like, 
you create um, different schema or different building blocks for um, a molecule and input and output and also for geometry. So this goes back to the data blocks and data <coughs> that we're talking about. And so to kind of illuminate this, like if I have a molecule as a single little block, um, what I can do is I can compose that into an output result um, where I will want basically my input and my output, so it's reproducible, um, and I have the single block inside a larger block. And what I can do is I can compose it up a tree um, so that the uh, trajectory now becomes uh, multiple of these results and having little blocks of them. Um, and in fact, like in a geometry optimization trajectory, um, you have all the different uh, results, but then you also have the initial and final molecule outside of it. Um, so in the full picture, I'd actually have two more green blocks out here. Um, and so thinking about in this way, you have um, this more composable hierarchy that you can do. Um, and worrying about transcribing this into a file format, um, if you have small data, it's trivial to do. If you have larger data, um, you need some translation layers involved. Um, but you know, going from a data model like this down to a file, um, they should kind of be agnostic from each other, at least from our point of view. Um, so hopefully just a, a real quick illumination um, of what we're talking about with data models, and hopefully Chris, I'm not misrepresenting um, your ideas at all in here. Um, but so a very simple diagrammatic overview of like, how this would actually work. Um, and you can think about this the same way in terms of trajectories uh, and parameter data, and you can compose it all the way up into a single model. Okay. <clears throat> Um, okay, so a little bit more to uh, the point of tools on MD file sharing. Um, so I want to say a little bit about my work, um, about uh, quantum chemistry sharing, basically. Um, and so uh, what we did was we started, we, we went out and we asked um, about 10, maybe 12 different database providers from like Materials Project to Nomad to IUPAC to you name it. And we said like, hey, what, what, how did you start this? Like, what, what was the actual way that you, you progressed? Um, and so their, their first comment was that um, everyone focuses on what kind of data that you're going to store. Um, but no one ever really talks about what are you actually going to do with that data, what's the purpose of that data. Um, and they said flipping it around is how you should always start these sharing tools. Um, and so from that, what we stated for quantum chemistry, again, in qualities of quantum chemists, um, is that uh, we want to store um, hundreds of millions of hours of computing, which is hundreds of millions or billions of these tiny little kilobyte fragments because quantum chemistry compresses very small. Um, and we want to do things like force field construction. Um, so we went to the open force field. We said, what do you guys need uh, for um, your force field thing? Um, then we said, what about physical property prediction? So we went to the experimentalists and said, what do you need um, to extrapolate out? Um, and so we went all the way down the line, of course, getting things like machine learning and methodology assessments. Um, and from each of these groups, we were able to come up with a set of requirements. And so, and a lot of times, we, we always talk about what are the tools involved and um, what are the, what's out there right now. But the real question is, like, what do we actually need? Because um, you see, like, a lot of these projects and their extent, um, but they might um, have maybe 50 users or 100 users. Um, and this makes sustainability extremely hard because these things are complicated and expensive. Um, so what are the commonalities involved where you get 1,000 users or 10,000 users in this particular space? Um, is really the things that <coughs> are um, And so this kind of leads me on to something called um, communities of practice. Um, so uh, this is something actually stole from Neil SSI uh, and kind of extrapolated out a little bit. Um, and so this is actually a, a, top, a slide that I use in my education work. Um, so whenever I talk about education, what's best practices in education. Um, but looking at it, I think this is actually applicable to this kind of, um, this kind of project as well. Um, you always need to scope these things out. You know, if I want to create something like in the um, trajectory, skip, uh, uh, trajectory sharing, um, that's a huge project just because of the data involved. So if it's a huge project because the data involved, my target audience size has to get big, the size of my project has to go up, um, which means the activity level has to be commensurate with all those ideas. Um, which is why, you know, I think when it comes to MD, trajectory sharing, and file sharing, you know, trying to figure out the commonalities involved to get a very large community into it is probably the most important point. Um, and the other takeaway from this is that um, there's always going to be communities. Like, you know, you can create a large community, but there's always going to be someone else. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, for example, like, uh, if I have some kind of trajectory file sharing, I'm not going to try to uh, consume the PDB or vice versa. Like, that seems like a very rough idea. Um, but what are, the, what are the commonalities involved between these two projects and what can we learn from each other is going to be very important. 
And so just looking at, out there at the world um, and trying to figure out, uh, for example, <coughs> what are our like databases? Um, well, there's tons of materials databases involved, um, and there's really great ideas to pull away from things like Kaggle. Um, if you haven't seen Kaggle, really recommend it. It's machine learning data. It uh, does an extremely good job for its particular use case. Um, for in particular, um, things like drug bank and more uh, are going to be really important. Um, and so if I look at all of these, um, what they do is they don't necessarily contain the same data, but what they do is they cross-reference each other. Um, and so what this means, actually, is uh, if I went to, for example, Citrine, and I actually had um, materials data for a drug, I could, it links back to drug bank or similar. Um, and so this is the, the very beginning of ontology ties um, between all these different <coughs> programs, is as soon as you have one single repository for this data that's after a very specific use case, um, then what you do is you reach out and you look at how do these things connect to other ideas in my field. Um, so I would encourage you not to try to solve everything at the same time, um, but solve a large enough problem that gets a large community, but it's not impossible to do, and then figure out how you can link to all these other projects. Um, because those linking are going to be incredibly popular. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so a couple of focus uh, recommendations uh, for this discussion. Um, I really try to avoid the technical challenges at the moment. Um, today, there's very few technical challenges that are not solved, I would say. Uh, it just takes money and time. Um, but if you can figure out the ideas and the uh, requirements and how to figure out how to build a big community, um, one at a time actually comes really quite easy. Um, I think you should enumerate the tools involved. There's a lot out there in the uh, trajectory file sharing already, um, so things to think about. And uh, for each of these, though, I wouldn't really think about them as their solutions. I would think about them as what are their goals. Like, what did they set out to solve? Why did they solve it? What kind of community do they build from that? It's probably the most important questions that you can answer for each one of these. Um, again, concentrating on the social considerations, I think, is um, probably a more important thing. Uh, how do I uh, do something that other people are interested in? How do I do something that's not just useful for myself, but useful for a big enough community um, that I can uh, actually get funding? For this? Um, and personally, the way that I usually found to do this is that uh, we get the 90% case. Uh, if you get the 90% case, then you've, you've made most people happy. Um, and then at least paying a little bit of attention to can you extend out to the 100% case? You know, what are the technical challenges involved? Maybe you cannot solve them today, but can you at least be flexible to solve them in the future? Um, a couple of gotchas, again, is database cross-reference each other quite frequently. Um, so I wouldn't try to uh, come up with a single solution that does everything. Mm -hmm. Come up with a solution that does something well, and then cross reference to people who do that well already. Um, <coughs> probably best to assume that trajectory format transformation is already possible. Um, this is by and large true, I think, with all the tools involved, between MD analysis, MD trash, RMAT, and all you name it. Um, this is at least somewhat possible. Um, and I would also assume that hosting is possible. I think if you come up with a good idea, I think there's certainly ways that we can find to actually post the data involved. Um, and uh, so with these ideas in mind, uh, I hope you will uh, have a very fruitful discussion. Uh, and I think if we have no questions, are there any questions? <coughs>